where uh, we're talking about painting tonight. I'm Daniel with Haunted Toddler Painting, and uh, today we're uh, continuing our series of beginner paint sets, and this paint set that we're working with today is going to be, uh, the Reaper has sent me two paint sets. One I already had, so we're dealing with Reaper paint sets today, and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of that while we paint a Reaper model, and uh, I'm going to give a paint set away. So, uh, everybody, welcome to the stream. I'm probably going to repeat that little bit of information a couple times during the stream today. But the first thing I want to do is last week's model, it finally dried up. And I just want to bring her out here so everybody can have a look at the way she turned out with the Army Painter Method. So, Excellent idea, Daniel. Good evening, yeah. everyone. Ah, we have Dale with us today. And today's, uh, today's been brought to us by Wild Turkey. Um, the Wild Turkey 101, to be exact. Anyway, but what do you think about her, Dale? Um, you're right. Once, uh, once she lost the glossy sheen of a freshly uh, um, applied wash, uh, the colors are really standing out now. I didn't think the leather was going to look as good as it does, but see? it actually looks see? really, really nice. See? See? You didn't believe me, then, did you? No, I didn't. I didn't. Hey, but that's just my experience. It's Megasuro 3000. How you doing there today? looking good yeah so uh, i'm gonna pause my video stream now so reaper sends you paint sets and they come in these wonderful cases they look like pistol cases okay so i'm showing it up in the little stream here real quick so you can see it in in my face so these are one, just one of the sets uh i'll lay it down here um, this is Bones paint set number one, and then I also have the starter paint set um, that we're actually going to be giving one away of. So, um, all right, so Bones paint is actually supposed to paint on the Bones models without primer. Actually, all their paint's supposed to be able to do this. So, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to open this up and I'll show you what this set looks like on the inside, okay? So, That's this a snazzy looking case. This That's doesn't have the too. foam that you would be used to with a gun case like the other one has so i'm going to get these paints out real quick now this right here is a place for your models you can put your model that you're working on and you can close it up and you can take it to a friend's house and you have your paints with you and effectively unless you're doing commission painting you know just this set maybe a couple extra colors you know you will be ready to rock and roll let's go over these colors real quick before i actually get them out so, and I think they do uh, do it justice. There is going to be 16 colors in this set that they sent me. We've got, uh, it appears to be Dragon Red, which is a deep red. Herald Heraldic Red, which is, you know, like a, a true red. Monster Mall, which is a pink color, like a mouth color. We've got a Cinnamon Red, Volcanic Orange. Sunrise orange, lantern yellow, that's a really good color, candlelight yellow, canary yellow, dragon green, wilderness green, ancient oak, naga green, uh, cat's eye green, dungeon slime, and spectral glow. Now, see if you notice this, this isn't really a beginner set, okay? We're missing some colors, we're missing blues. We're missing uh, a white. We're missing a black. So this is just the one of the sets that I'm going to be working with today. It's not our primary set that we'll be painting with, but we will be using colors out of the set. Now I'll get the let me let me get these paints out real quick. I'm just going to set them aside here, and I have not mixed these paints up at all. They have not been mixed up at all. So you all. Get a chance to have a look at, at, at them. I'm going to squirt a little bit out before I actually start mixing them up. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and get these out here. And so you, you can tell I haven't even put the color on the lids like I normally do either. All right. So let's, uh, this case is actually kind of jacked up a little bit too. Now the other set is a set I've had for a while. But they gave me one of this. I already had this set. But they gave me a brand new one. And the cool thing about this is I'll be able to give you all that other one away. Um, so I will we'll give that away here uh, probably towards the middle of the show. Um, I've promoted it out some. Hopefully we'll, we'll get somebody on here to, to, to win it. Now this is more of a beginner set. You only get 13 colors. But you get muddy brown, pure white, tan skin, cloudy gray, pale saffron, turf green, twilight purple, 
Solid Black, Heraldic Red, Oceanic Blue, Skeleton Bone, Dragon Gold, and Blade Steel. The only color that repeated was the Heraldic Red. Now, this case is a little bit different um, than the other one. The other one had a plastic insert with all the all that went into it. Now, this case also has a lot more stuff in it because this is my go case. This is the case I designed to take upstairs and sit at the kitchen table and paint with my kids. So, um, has a lot more colors in it. It says foam inserts instead of the plastic insert, which I'm actually probably going to switch everything over to the plastic insert. And I've actually added a bunch of washes that I use as well and um I, just to let y'all know i did let this set um wait a minute, did i have a repeat uh, no i didn't i thought i had a repeat in there um I, I have let this set set sit for a couple of uh couple of weeks just so we can see how it uh looks after been setting for a while okay so let's see here Make sure I get all the right ones out. Because I do have extra colors in here that are not part of the beginner set. Daniel, did you um, bump a control or something? Your audio took a big uh, drop there. What? Like can you hear? seconds ago. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's considerably reduced in volume. No, it should be the same. I asked chat. No one seems to have noticed anything or no one's made any comment. Huh. Question, so maybe it's on my end. I'll maybe because it's still showing to be at the same volume it was a minute ago. All right. Probably me. It could be. Are you listening to me through the... Um, you're listening to me through Discord, right? No, I'm listening to you through Twitch. Oh, let's see here. I'm sorry. Yes, I am listening to you through Discord. So I moved. <laughs> such a bald faced. I moved this mic up. Okay, that just did something. Now yeah. It's much better like before. So, so what you, was that? that was the mic on my headset. Let me let me convert it. Hold yeah. on one second, guys. We're just gonna make a little change so he can hear me a little bit better. Um, oh, I hear you great now. Now I'm gonna switch over to this mic. How's that sound? That sounds a lot better. Oh, that's it? that's much better. Yeah. And a bit louder too. Yep. 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 Better quality though. Yeah, let's see here. Now, the Reaper does make one of my favorite paints, and it's called the liner paints. They're pretty cool, but we're not going to get into that. So, this set here is the beginner set. We will probably pull a little bit from these colors, right? But we're not going to make it our primary pull. We're going to try to use everything from the beginner set that I'm going to send everybody, okay? All right, so we'll put these over here. And these here are our, will be the beginner colors. Now I am going to take this real quick. We're going to take, uh, this is heraldic red. And we've got the same color over here somewhere. Let me find it. Okay, so here's the same paint. Same paint number. This one's kind of faded. It's got tape over it. Um, I did that. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, this one here has been setting came from the factory it's been sitting for a while so i'm just going to squirt a little bit of it out and see what it looks like ah it's clogged well that works all right where's my needle all right nothing like a modern day clog to make your day i know uh, let me get to my my needle over here come on come on come on come on come on all right all right let's see here let me get back to my chat window so i can Make sure we talk to everybody. All right. Uh, no, I'm from Mexico, and I don't understand much English. Uh, hola, Megasorio. That's the extent of my of my Spanish. So, don't want to... Okay, so, oh, man, that clog is pretty bad. Straight off the bat with a big clog. That is not good at all. Me, pause. So what's your number one tip for releasing a clog? Uh, a dang uh, paper clip. Jam a paper clip into that tube. Pretty much. That seems, it's a pretty universal sort of approach, I think. Yeah. Huh. Weird. Okay. Paint looks mixed up pretty good, though. I'll give it that. There you go. Yeah, it looks pretty pigmented. All right. And I was going to shake one, so that's the new one. Let's take the old one. I'm going to put the old one in the, 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 the mixer. The mixer of doom. Okay, let's see what it looks like difference-wise. 
Ah, see, it's clogged up too. Eh. Well, that's not good to start out with, having the paints clog up. <laughs> How old did you say this set was now? I just got it a few weeks back. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's, I think we're going to be running into that in a little bit. Okay, so that that's a little thicker on this side than this. I went with a tile today, so we're going to be using the tile a little bit. Okay, so the models that we got today are the exactly identical models, okay? These two models here. They are Reaper Bones models. The only difference is this one has been primered with uh, anti-shine matte varnish that I have. This one has not. Okay. So, um, here's the thing, though. The Reaper paints are supposed to paint on their models with no primer. So, we're going to find out before we actually start painting this one if they actually paint that way. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab a brush here. I'm going to clean the soap out of it so I can go back to my old Element Games brushes. I'm probably going to zoom in a little bit here to help us out. There we go. I'm impressed that those figures are just like the uh, decals on the cases for the paint. That lizard man. Yes. I did that on purpose. I... I did that on purpose. Oh, they're oh, yeah. getting more and more clever with uh, everything. So, Pale Saffron, considering I have like five of that model, so... Okay, so I'm starting out with yellow. Why do I start out with yellow? You know, Dale? Uh, because of your sunny disposition? Oh, oh look how creamy that's coming out a little bit there. Huh. I might not want to get rid of these paints at all. No, um, yellow is because I'm painting green. Uh, okay, so... And see, I don't see the connection, but I, I live you, to be enlightened. Yeah, so you want to put yellow down before you put the green down. So let's see here. So you're just going to do the uh, old block out the color kind of well, thing now? or Somewhat, but look at this. You won't well, do yellow all over. Well, yeah, actually, I will. Oh, really? Okay. Look, look can you see what I, I've got going on here? Yeah, I can see you're applying some yellow to his chest. And you know what? It went on. Now, what if if it wasn't going to do what you say it's just done, what would that have looked like? It would have beat it I up. Mean, okay. Oh, nice. Because all other paints beat up on here. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, why do you suppose why do you suppose that? They formulate like their that? they formulate their medium to do that. So, okay. uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go side by side. We're going to paint two models now since we now know that this is going to work, okay? So uh, I'm going to actually switch over to a bigger brush for this because we are going to cover the entirety of the model in yellow. Okay. Unbelievable. But I'm open to new ideas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Remember what my wife always said. What's that? Don't show me till you're done because it looks like a hot mess. <laughs> Well, big, bright, yellow lizard guy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. It's actually going on pretty good. Um, this actually makes me fairly happy. I've, I've never actually tested this, by the way. To do it. So is this a function of, of the material the model's made of or the function of the material the paint is made of? Paint. Now, you still have to... Uh... You still have to, I got a little bit of medium in there. You know, um, you still have to wash the model yeah. when you get it. So um, that's still a thing. You still have to wash it. Um, let's see here. And these models are part of the Bones line as well, right? Yeah, you know how much I love those. Well, and, and you know, uh, I, I have my eyes open for this kind of stuff only because I have a passing interest. And, and being here with you on Thursday nights uh, uh, heightens that. But I've seen a number of mentions that Bones, uh, the Bones line, is not quite a not their top notch sculpting. Um, well, it's not but that... that. Hold on, hold on. Okay. But, but but other than that, um, generally speaking, they're still of a good quality, um, and they're cheaper than the mainline stuff. And now you're telling me that they're even better because they don't have to be primed. Well, that's and only you're proving to us that. 
that's the case. So they sound like a fantastic line of miniatures. Well, okay. So if you, I use bones for monsters only. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have to have a lot of detail. Okay. Uh, for a, a monster compared to a hero. The, the issue that they are not a bad sculpt, okay? And I'll explain this to you. Every Bones model has a counterpart made in white metal, okay? Right. That you can buy that model in white metal. It costs probably about twice as much as what you would pay yeah. for it. So we've got, okay, look at that. Look at that. Look how bright that is. Yeah, it's pretty uh, bright yeah. yellow. So anyway, so the, um, the thing is that they, they all have this whole line of in metal and in bones. So what they do is they end up sending like a couple metal models to China and then China makes these plastic injection molds and they wear out. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, it, just, it wears out. So now they've actually created a, a new line of bones models, which I haven't bought yet called bones USA. Okay. And they're actually uh, using their new plastic, which is called bones black, which it's not black. It's a gray color. It's actually right. this color here. This is a Bones model. Okay. So, and um, what it does is that they're, they, they can have quality control on the models now in America. And instead of, of having to ship them back to China going, these look like hot garbage, uh, yeah. they can reshoot them if the plastic allows it to, or they can just trash them. So and they can monitor the molds for wear and stuff and know when to, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that makes sense. But I mean, I, 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 and and you know, I'm I'm no expert, and I haven't done extensive research. But, um, you know, bones has come up in a number of conversations over the last few months. Especially um, with me. And it's, and and it's never been. It, I mean, you know, the the real. I don't have no a better word for it. The real snobby people are the ones who seem to be just, oh, the sculpts are just never good enough. They're, they're okay, though, for the peons, is the sort of attitude I'm reading. But again, you know, it's when you think of the application yeah, um, and and the fact that you're not banging out one ranger or one elf or something, you're banging out ten lizard men. Yeah. And like you say, they don't need the kind of detail you're talking about. Unless you're super, super Pinky. into the hobby, and at which case, like, you know, uh, sh fill your boots, brother. Like, show us how it really needs to be done. But, you know, yeah. I don't know. Like I say, I don't have in-depth knowledge to share on this. I'm okay. just your average Joe consumer. So in some ways, I guess that's a good foil. Yeah. So this is the primed model you're working on now. Yeah. So we're going to look at the difference here in a second. How are you finding the paint going on the prime model just compared like, to the unprime? Like it would be with any other prime model. With yellow paint. So would you say it's worth priming it just the same? Or well, is if it... you're painting with the Bones I colors, um, if you're painting with the Bones colors and the Bones models, uh, I would say if you can get away with not priming it, go for it. I'm pretty sure they still have a color that's going to suck either which way. Yeah. So, so now we've got, um, so this basic set only has one green in it. It's this tough green. It's a very generic, like, grass green okay so we're gonna have to play around a little bit so we're gonna take this let's see here i'm mixing it up real quick so um i'll let y'all know i do have a patreon uh the patreon itself is not for me to make money i do not live off patreon i i do have a day job that i love very much uh the patreon is a way to supplement the buying of these paint sets and things like that um, or buying models i just posted the patreon link into the chat twitch chat so what the patreon will provide is um, if you buy then at the four dollar level you get access to the discord and you can hang out with me and dell during the paint show um, if you buy in at the five dollar level that means you get access to my recipes that i create very early which I do have one in the works. Uh, hopefully in the next uh, two or three weeks um, after we finish this series, I will bring this recipe out and you all will be amazed because we're going to try something here. I'm going to try painting with oil paints here in the next couple of weeks, something I've never done before. So we're going to play with this together. And then, um, and then the $30 level means I'm going to sit down for one hour of my time a month with you to help you and coach you to be a better painter. 
and uh, then from there, um, or or you, if you don't want to be a better painter and you just want a model painted, I'll paint it for that thirty dollars. That would give you one model a month that you would get for thirty dollars. So uh, personally, I think that's a great deal, um, considering how it's much I, deal. how much I normally charge to paint models. So um, I am looking for my brown right now, and I think I've lost it. Uh, where Geo Brown? My muddy brown. Where you at? It's the tough green. There it is. Harold Davis Red. I can't find my brown. This isn't good. Where you at? Where you at? Did I even get you out? I haven't seen a brown out yet. Oh, there he is. Left him in the case. Okay. So, oh, shame. here's the thing. Reaper models do not have... They, they don't have washes. I think you have of. a loose connection someplace. No, I, I was running the I was running the thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they don't have washes. I'm forgetting about that fellow. Yeah, that fellow is the best. My best friend. Okay. Yeah, here before I see him. Okay. So okay. We got the so we're gonna mix up some green here. A little bit of this yellow. We're gonna lighten it up some. Okay. I yeah. notice you're back to a tile tonight. Yeah, I just didn't feel like cleaning the thing off. I was lazy. Oh, my. Yeah, I know. So we batted a little bit of brown and yellow. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, it's probably going to look hot, hot garbage this morning. Here. Green's a tricky color like that, eh? Yeah, and considering I'm red, green, colorblind. Ah, the paint's not all the way dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the chest area yellow the best we can. Okay. Right, we're going to get the rest of the green on here. Is this our primed model or unprimed? Uh, this is the unprimed model. And right. now it doesn't matter because we have a base coat on. Yeah, exactly. So. And I'm back to my camo pants, which means I don't need paper towels anymore. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. your mother will be horrified. Oh, uh, that's the whole reason why I have camo cargo shorts on. She actually came over for dinner yesterday. I made a nice pot roast. Excellent. Yeah. I made a new dish tonight that I was quite uh, happy with. Uh, charo beans. Charo beans. So you burnt yeah. the beans? I didn't burn the beans at all. I am an expert bean cooker. Um, and it was not a big deal uh, a dish, just the way it's put together and uh, and how it's served. It was delicious, yeah. and it's going into the permanent file. That's good. Now, I do have a recipe that I use. I make uh, what we call soup beans here in the Appalachian Mountains. And right. essentially, it's pinto beans cooked with a little bit of pork fat. Well, that's not far off the charo beans because the charo beans starts off with uh, slow frying uh, about six ounces of bacon, uh, rendering some of the fat out, which you then use later to, uh, uh, you know, cook with. Or uh, the particular lady I learned the recipe off, she likes to add it to her soft flour tortilla uh, recipe. She says it adds a lot of flavor. Uh, but you start with with the pork. And then you've got some onion in there and some garlic and uh, a nice Roma tomato and uh, a jalapeno pepper. And then you get a couple of cans of beans in there. I cook my beans fresh, so it would have been a couple of uh, cups of beans. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of the bean uh, uh, juice if, uh, kept over from the cooking and uh, makes a nice uh, saucy uh, bean thing that you put over a little bit of rice and it's... Uh, you know, with a salad or something like that, or a bit of bread on the side, makes an awesome half-hour, quick, one-pot, one-skillet meal. Okay. I enjoyed it a lot. Very filling, too. I was surprised how filling it was. That's awesome. Okay. Let me get the back of these legs done. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, I just noticed the fringe on them now. Yeah. You notice I didn't paint it. I did notice that, and that's why I noticed it. 
<laughs> we could go on like this forever. I don't think that's such a bad color of green, actually. It's not Turned out pretty nice. Still have to mix it up a little bit as I go over here. Well, yeah, you know. Not every lizard man has an identical green set Now, of the way I handle bones models is I try to paint. The whole premise behind this, this show that we do is just paint it quickly, get it on the table. It's originally how we started this whole whole rigmarole. We get it painted fast, get it on the table. So. Okay, there we go, lizard man. You got your first coat. All right. I'm gonna let him dry just, oh, yes, I see. just for a second here. Now that I've seen you paint a few things, I'm starting to see how you think about it. Okay. Just starting. I haven't got you totally pegged. But this is this is a great example because there are some obvious, like the yellow chest and the fringe, are obvious parts that are not going to be green, and so it's uh, I'm just I just find out. I'm just studying, man. Talking yeah. out loud. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Yeah, and the stuff is. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, we're gonna let that dry for a minute. He looks messy, which is fine. Now the next one. Oh my gosh, let me have a, a sip of the drizz ink. <laughs> it's got a nice oaky. It's got a taste of a little bit of cinnamon in it. Mm -hmm. Little nutmeggy. So I'm trying to think of what we can do here. So I don't know if I want to paint them the same color. Oh, what are you thinking? I don't know yet. It's a surprise. Yeah, of course it is. That means he doesn't know what he's doing, folks. Hush. <laughs> All right, let's do this here. You don't know what color I just put down. Ooh, ooh. I'm sure it's got a fancy name, though, right? Yeah, it's uh, Oceanic Blue. We have a good crowd out here tonight. Oh, that's because we're Quick giving something bat, away. Uh... It's because we're giving something away today. Look at that. Oh, that's okay. Actually, I just want to say, uh, welcome Abbott, Cost Abbott Costello, Balfrin, um, Bo Bofrin. Is that Lord of the Rings? I think so. Uh, Cabot Commando. Carbon one to four X Y Z Casino Thanks Chupa S Crazy Cyber Extra More Lemon Juices Twelve Link Dead uh, Megasorio Three Thousand uh, Obsidian Risk Rhino Dino Nineteen Seventy Three and Tan Leal and Willie the Rat That's a name we hadn't heard in a while is our man Willie I'm glad to see nice. you made it back buddy. Willie shows up at a couple of other streams that I uh, take part in too. So yeah, yeah. it's always good to see Willie. Willie used to, Willie used to join us all the time. Yeah. So let's grab some of the screen here. We'll mix it in with this blue. Oh yeah. Oh, second. you're going to blue now, are you? Well, this yeah. ought to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although actually now I yeah I can see where you would do yeah a little bit of blue mixed in with the green. Okay, yeah. Now we got a lot of paint on our brush right now because I do not believe in too thin coats. Uh, speed speed painter. He's a speed painter. It's like a dark teal you're coming up with there now. That should be quite interesting. Well, I put it on too thick though. Oh no. Oh well, you know. That's fine. We'll forgive you. But we're leaving this the test time. yellow. I have to hit this with the air uh, with the airbrush with the the wonderful hair dryer here in a minute. Yeah. Actually, this bluish tinge looks like it's going on a little better than the green ones. Oh yeah, it is. It's thicker. I missed old Mister Willie the Rat. I hadn't seen him in forever. I wonder if he'll tell us what he's been up to lately. He's been ignoring me, is what it is. Oh, he still likes you, though. He wouldn't uh, be here if he didn't. You know, you and your uh, giveaways, anyway. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm getting so famous now, I can give stuff away. That's not from Troll Lord. 
Yeah, well, it's great. Yeah, I'm not they really. They should pay you. Who, troll lords? <laughs> sure, everyone should pay you, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. And if I had the money, I'd pay you. Well, actually, let's uh, talk about that. You can oh, pay sure. me uh, if you'd like uh, by going to my Patreon and uh, well, signing up yeah. for my Patreon. Come join me in chat every again, Thursday evening. Again, it's just for craft supplies, guys. I do have a really awesome thing we are going to be working on shortly. And I think you all are going to love it, especially you war gamers. So, especially you guys that play in the 40k realm of the grim dark. Uh oh. There you go. You mentioned uh, you're going to be playing around with oil paints in the near future. My grandmother, I think was a pretty good uh, landscape oil painter in her day. I've got quite a number of her pieces in my home. Well, I'm not going to get fancy. I'm going to get like the cheap $10 oil set from Hobby Lobby. And, yeah, that's uh, fine. start with that because I've never done it before. I don't really want to invest, yeah. uh, invest anything into it. Uh, now, I will tell you, part of our uh, project that we're I'm working on the recipe will require oil paints. That's the only oh, thing I'm going to tell you because to sign up to find the recipe early... You need to sign up for my Patreon at level at the five dollar level. That's the second level. They get you access. Well, to... am I not just a lucky fellow then? Because I'll get to see that. Yes, you will. Don't tell anybody now. I wouldn't say especially, a thing. Especially Willie the Rat, because you know he's a rat. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with rats. We like rats. Actually, rats are very personable. Yeah, I know. I had a friend who used to keep pet rats. Yeah. Okay. I worked at. Um, before I went into college the first time around, when I got out of high school, I had a summer job where um, I worked at a place that bred uh, laboratory animals. Yeah. So we were taking care of mice, guinea pigs, rats. Um, and out of all of them, the rats were the easiest to deal with. Um, you know, every day you'd uh, check them, see if they need to move uh, to a clean cage. This was a place that pumped out 30,000 animals a month. Oh, wow. Specifically for the laboratory market. Yeah. Yeah, their ad was, do you like working with animals? <laughs> and, you know, when you're when you're a teenager, you're going, yeah, I like working with animals. Of course I do. Is there a teenager that doesn't? Yeah. Okay. Right? And so then let's... you go. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself real quick, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you talk for a minute while I blow hot air. Um, <laughs> so, oh, you're gonna let me blow hot air at the same time? To yeah. So, guys, uh, we're gonna awesome. we're, I'm gonna let you uh, sit here and chit chat a minute with Dale because I'm gonna be running the hair dryer to dry these out real quick. Just so give me a second. <laughs> so let me continue the tale of animal breeding. Ugh. Actually, they were pretty good. Um, like I said, the rats were the most personable. Um, occasionally, you'd get a little bit of, uh, of the flu or something running through the uh, through the laboratory, and you'd come across uh, the cages were basically a Rubbermaid container that had a grate on the top, snapped into place with a feeder and a water bottle, and litter in the bottom of the box. And some days you come by and, you know, the litter's nice and clean. You just give them a refill on the water and the food. And then you get to one where there's like three rats in the middle of the bin standing on top of an island of not really dry litter and a sea of pee around them because they'd caught something. And their attitude always was, oh, hey, man, we're glad you're here. God, can you get us out of this mess, man? Because it's, it's like it's wet down here and it's really unpleasant. And we're so sorry to cause you all this extra trouble. And, uh, you know, you always had a trolley with, uh, with the clean bins on it. You just lift them out of one, put them into another. And they were always so nice That's... and appreciative of the efforts that uh, you did for them. I didn't Mice realize on the other. how personable oh, rats were. All of them. All of them were, were genuine gentlemen and ladies. Now, the mice, subversive little finks that they are, you'd go by for days and the litter's all fluffy and clean, fluffy and clean until one day you go to pull their bin out and it weighs about 40 tons. And what those little creeps do is they pack it into the corners under the litter until it weighs a metric boatload. And then you've got Come to Come on, say what you're getting ready to say. Board. You know They're you're horrible gonna, mice. You're, yeah. getting, you're getting ready to say a metric shit ton. No, I'll, well, I probably was, yeah, but I don't want to say that. It's not my stream. If it were my stream, I'd be cursing like a friggin' trooper, but it's your stream, Daniel, and I'm not going to do that to you. That's all right. I'm just so, talking about rotten mice right so now. So I'm taking I'm uh, this brown, which is a dark, muddy brown, is actually what it's called. Oh, is it ever? 
And then I'm going to take and I'm putting it on this turtle shell. Ah, uh, the turtle shell. Yeah. So, so now how, is it just a, a normal reflex for you now to look at a model, see the colors in your head and say, here are the first paints that I have to apply? Or do you have to sit down and think about it for well, a Well, you, you usually, unless you're just playing around, see, and sometimes I still just play around, you know, just to learn stuff. You yeah. usually have to come up with a color scheme, especially if yeah. you're a war gamer like I am. So, yeah. uh, let's see here. I think uh, Willie the Rat, he's a bold action guy. So he's bold action. Now, I'm going to give myself, I am going to let myself use my homemade uh, washes today. Oh, yes. Yeah, so... Since there really isn't any, um, so we're gonna see you ruin another model by applying too much wash. Is that what pretty you're much, saying? Pretty much, pretty much. So I'm gonna paint yeah. the turtle shells on these the same. So um, and we're gonna be testing out the opacity of brown. Brown is one of those colors that sometimes it's opaque, sometimes it's not, because um, it's comprised of literally blue, yellow, and red. Um, so, it does seem to be fairly opaque, this brown though. Now, I will say, for beginner paints, um, these actually are turning out pretty good. So, I wonder how many, uh, people jumped on here because they thought it was another, uh, GM's tricks of the trade. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I noticed they didn't have that graphic together last yeah, week. I, I know. I like to give Chuck a hard time about that. Okay, so I'm not going to go too Watch crazy. Not he's not been feeling well, man. He was pretty sick yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I called him and he's down in his back, so. Oh, that's... Sorry, Maybe. guys. Y'all are out of screen here. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're sick, so I guess we're not gaming Saturday. He's like, no, 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 we're still gaming. I was like, okay. <laughs> I might die at the game table, but I'll be there. I'll be there when the So my game, fellas, have finally got out of the dungeon and back to civilization, and I'm not entirely sure what they're going to do next. I think they're, well, what are we going to do now? I don't okay. think they have an idea either. So let's see here. So we've got a bit of a leather issue. There's a lot of leather. And so what we're going to do with that is I'm going to lighten this brown up some, and we're going to do it two ways. First way is I'm going to put a drop of white in the brown I just put down. Okay, it's going to lighten it up. Then I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow back into it. You hear that wonderful sound? It's that paint. Yeah, I heard your words, but I didn't hear anything else. I said, that's, I said, did you hear that wonderful sound? It's the paint mixer. No, you're doing a good job keeping it off mic all of a sudden. Oh, well, I'm glad. I think you're doing it on purpose. Well, you know what sucks is almost every one of these paints I've had to like end up clearing a clock. It's not fun. Now, I will tell you, these paints are fairly thin, so I think they will work in an airbrush with minimum amount of thinner. So. Well, I did, I did notice that the label on the box said uh, suitable for airbrush use, too, so they certainly expect you to. Yeah, I know. But almost all paints that say that don't really mean it. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm okay. just telling you how it is, man. So yeah, I'm going to okay. teach you a secret uh, about knocking miniatures over. Now, I'm going to teach okay. you a secret real quick. Um, it's easier to darken a pigment than it is to lighten a pigment. So first thing I'm going to do is add this yellow to this white. Okay. So now we got this really light yellow. Now I'm going to add this brown to it here. So it's still a little bit more brown to it. Ugh. So it's very, very white, light brown. Is it ever? Okay. So. Gonna look. Oh, there we go. Now the video is catching up. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> Did I leave my blackout? That's a really horrible looking color. I don't like it at all. No. Yeah. Very weird. What color is this? Oh, it's splash. So now, where's that brown color going to be applied, Daniel? This is going to be on a leather. 
leather what? He looks like a naked lizard. For he's got straps, bro. Straps? Yeah. He's got okay. like, he's got a sheath for his knife. He's got a thing girding his loins. A loin guard. Yeah, because, you know, lizards have to cover their lizard junk. Lizard's junk is all pretty much internal. Not on this lizard. Yeah, a mutant lizard, no doubt. So I'm very, I'm still super excited about Ravenloft, by the way. Are you? Yeah. Talk more about it. Yeah, Ravenloft, Stride, the the Isle I of Dread. <laughs> I did see, I did see the official announcement uh, that you mentioned last week after you were talking about it. Yeah. Do you um do you watch anyone on YouTube like uh, Dungeon Craft or any of that crap? Yeah, I, like, I don't like that. I don't like that guy. No. No. Are we talking which which guy are we talking about? The one that wears the vest or the one that that makes stuff? Um, in this particular case, the guy who wears the vest. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's professor, co professor Dungeon Master. He's cool. I actually use his terrain, his ultimate terrain, um, yeah. for my terrain type stuff. So, um, I did not make a really good color here. So, let's see what we got over here in our set. Uh, what color is Ooh, that? it's looking less brown now. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> That's the darkening part. Yes, it is. I don't like it. Not one bit at all. Why? Because it's too dark. Okay. Uh, Wow, did they not give you a leather brown with this? Let's go back to this yellow. This is this is us playing around until we get the right color. What's the one gallon note on the back of your hand for? Oh, it's uh, I had to go pick up paint at Lowe's today. Ah, okay. We're painting the dining room this weekend, remember? Yeah, well, I remember. Yep, this ain't gonna work. So we're going back to the drawing board, guys. All right. So we're going back to yellow. One drop of yellow. One drop to brown. If I could find the brown, gosh. These labels are so fat. That's another thing. That is another thing. Their labels are faded like crap. Sorry, I had to clean my... Scratch it. Okay. Okay, all right. Do, 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 do. Cloudy green, twilight purple. There it is. So th their their labels fade. I don't like that. Part of me, the reason I don't like that is one of my jobs is I manage an application at work that prints labels, and I have to conform to strict guidelines about how what type of stuff we use in our labels. Like as far as what I mean is like. Uh, the type of uh, inks and things in the label so they don't fade. Mm -hmm. So and I'm just like, man, can't you guys get your, your act together here? So what we're doing here is he's got a strap here. Well, there you go, folks. We've all found out tonight Daniel's a closet label snob. I'm sorry. If you're going to make a... <laughs> if, you, if you're going to be a paint company... You're, you need to be able to read the labels. I'm sorry. I, I think I think the other side of that message is, buddy, you don't paint enough. You need to paint more and buy fresh paint on a regular basis. No, these these ones that are really faded bad, this set's only like six months old. I've only had it for that amount of time. Well, it's about time you wrote a letter then, I think. I think I will. Actually, so I'll did just... you tell me that Reaper is a Texas company? Yeah, they're out of Texas. And, you know, uh, Chuck was going to see about getting me a sponsorship through Reaper, and I really am I'm, I'm enjoying their paints, but I'm mad about these labels. <laughs> the paints are awesome. The labels need some work. Yeah, guys, man, you're just going to turn me completely off on your product by your crappy labels. Well, you're a professional label guy, so what would you recommend they... Uh... Do to improve their labels. Sir. Uh, just make sure that they use a uh, a uh, um, 
laser jet that doesn't fade. Of course, they need to go to, if they're going to keep with these types of labels, which looks like they are printed in-house, right? They need to go to a um, thermal label. And not this, this is a, either, this is not inkjet. We'll test it right here. So we'll take this right here. So that's a laser jet, but it's not a thermal label. I just wetted it. If it was uh, inkjet, it would just, it would come off. So that's a laser right. jet. It's not a thermal label, though. A thermal label is a type of paper that changes when you heat the temperature up. That's, uh, that's pretty much just the labels I have to deal with on a daily basis. So... Just, I'm really frustrated now. This just frustrates me. Uh, hey, Dale, can you send Chuck a message, yeah. uh, whether it's on Facebook or something, and see if he can come in here and get the uh, uh, raffle started for us? If not, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, you need me to do what? Can, okay, can, all right. So am I slurring or am I you just not hearing me? I can still hear you, but you seem to be backed off your mic there. Oh, okay. The, uh, Sorry. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure if I was slurring or not. So um, you might have been slurring a little. Shh, not. No, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> no. Can you message Chuck and see if he can come in here and get a um, a, uh, um, a raffle started? Okay. I am so on it. Thank you, sir. I didn't mean to sound hateful. If I just sounded hateful, I apologize. No, you didn't. What do you mean, sounded hateful? If I sounded hateful. About what? Because sometimes when I enunciate, because my southern accent has made a, makes me enunciate from time to time. So. No, and, and I have to say, I, I, you know, when I asked you to repeat things, it's generally because of the southern accent. But it's getting better with every week, right? Okay. I'm understanding more and more. All right. So, let's see here. This right here. I do notice that we have a few of the same people in here that were in here that won the other paint raffle. Remember? Really? Hey, yeah, yeah, you weren't I in here. I only recognize a couple of the... Of the you weren't in here at the time. Oh, it was Obsidian Risk was in here, and I believe... Uh, who else was in here? I can't remember. Let's see here. All right, guys, we'll probably be starting the raffle here shortly. I know that's what a lot of y'all are here for. Uh, let's get this paint set sent out to you. Uh, okay. We're not even an hour in yet. Oh. I think they need to watch just a little more. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know they do. It's a good thing, folks, hey, that I'm not in charge of this channel. You would all have fled the boat like it was going down ages ago. Message is out, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, let's work a little bit on the shield sun. The shell. So did you find a brown that you're going to be able to deal with? Oh, yes. Okay, that's a bit lighter then, eh? Yeah. Oh, so the shell is going to go two-tone brown then. Oh, it's going to go more two-tone brown. Yeah. I did not anticipate this step. I thought I had you pegged. Well, you got to remember, as I said before, Reaper doesn't have a wash, so that means there's a lot of highlighting that's going to happen. Yeah. You've got a wash, though, and you're going to it. Well, Dang I might heaven. not use it. Oh, really? Yeah. That doesn't sound like you, sir. Oh. Chuck is either hastily preparing or nowhere near his computer. Oh. I should call him on the phone. But listen, man. Listen. He may be sick as a dog for all we know. I need you to get in here and work on this raffle. Get in here, man. Because last time he said, write down their names. 
and then roll a die. Did I lose you? I'm sorry, pardon me. Uh, you got really quiet there. Oh, I was just um, yeah, I was just uh, rereading some messages from a chat with Chuck earlier. Okay. I'm gonna have myself a Werther's original, and no, we are not sponsored by Werther's original. That's a shame. I know. That'd be a good sponsorship. They probably know nothing about paints, but you'd get good candy. Mm hmm. I'm actually mm. kind of jealous you got a good candy there now. If I were your teacher, I would have told you that you should have brought one for everyone because apparently you haven't. Well, here's the issue the sugar free. Oh. oh, now hold on. That's not an original word. There's <laughs> sugar free. What are you trying to pull? Look, it's the chocolate sugar free Weathers original. I didn't get to this rotund shape and size by eating sugar free goods, mister. What are you um, trying to push? Sugar free is good for you. Well, it's not good for me. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's not sugar free. That's Zucker free. You got that mixed up, man. So it's Facebook free? Does that mean that Mark Zuckerberg is really Mark Chocolateberg? Uh, Sugarberg. Mark Sugarberg. Is that what that means? I have no idea. I bought these at Aldi. It could mean anything. So what we're doing now is we're taking some a little bit brighter of that brown and we're taking and hitting the top parts of each segment of the shell. Okay. It's not really a hard step to do. But this is just a highlight that we're doing just to see if you can tell what the shell looks a little bit more like an actual shell. Give it that 3D. Yeah. So when you don't have a wash, you have to think about going from dark to light. I don't think Chuck ever watches. I think he did for a bit one night. Yeah. Problem is, I think the guy, uh, he's probably in surgery to have like yet another pair of arms added to his body so he can um, continue to juggle the 900 jobs he seems to juggle. Well, he tells me he watches. That's the thing. But as much grief as we give him on here, I don't think he watches. You're just trying to tease him out of hiding now. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm taking the same color and going along the edges of this uh, his uh, thing for his arrows or spears or whatever this is. And then I'm also going to do the edge of this knife hilt. That's a good question. What has he got in his quiver? Because he doesn't seem to have a bow anywhere. It's does probably he? spears. Like short spears or some crap like that. I was that. just going to say really short spears. Yeah. I can see that. Bizarre. So I decided to listen to some uh, books by uh, more people of color here lately. Oh, yeah. Like, I've been listening to audio. That's that work now for? So uh, I just finished two this past week. And um, the first one was, it's there's sequels. It's one, you know, um, Dread Nation was the first one. And the second one was the um, uh, Dead... Dead Divide or Dead something like dread, something like that. Anyway, um, it's by the it's Justina Ireland. Okay, and uh, so it's a historical 
alternate earth fiction. So did you right. ever read um, or see the movie Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies? No. So the I premise no behind this was during the period of Pride and Prejudice, a few years beforehand, what happened was the dead rose and they started dealing with the whole world. So in England, uh, rich ladies would end up going to school to learn Kung Fu. Makes sense. That was the lady's job. The lady's job was to protect the household and the man. The men already learned how to fight because they had to go to war. But So the women had to learn. They go to these really expensive schools to learn from these Chinese masters Kung Fu. Well, so... Um, and this one, which probably is about the same time period, during the Civil War in the Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg, the dead rose up, and the North and South just quit fighting each other and started fighting the dead. So they technically ended the war past the 13th Amendment, right? But civilization sort of fell in America. And what happened was they, uh, and I'm just giving you a premise of the, the story, in, in the 13th Amendment in America... There's a clause that pretty much at one point said that if you got arrested, you gave up your rights of freedom and stuff. So people used to get arrested a lot uh, if you were of color and got sold back into uh, chain gangs down south. Um, right. So, you know, it's slavery and all that crap. Um, well, in this one is if you get bit by a zombie, uh, you automatically lose your freedom. Well, they could start coming up with rumors that people of color were actually immune to zombie bites. So they would go around and say, hey, that person got bit by a zombie, and they'd send them down to the south into slavery again. Again. Yeah. And then and then they said, well, since they, they're hot in immunity, we can make a vaccine, and only they can use it because it, it boosts their immunity that they already have to the zombie bites. Which they don't really have because it was a rumor. Right. So, but they actually did make a vaccine and only give it to black people. So, it's kind of interesting. But kids, when they turn the age of twelve, uh, would if they um, if they weren't white children, they would go off to to learn to fight and kill zombies. zombies. Boys were sold in as being family bodyguards. Guards. Girls were sold, not sold, but I wouldn't say sold. They were contracted because they actually got paid like two dollars a week mm -hmm. the girls would be hired to um protect women and keep them pure from men trying to get to them and from zombies but they would never give white people the injection for the vaccine because it was better to be dead or a zombie than to be a slave just bizarre is that not insane so, no, but I will tell you, these books were dang good. I really enjoyed them. Well, they got a lot of acclaim. Yeah. The next one I'm reading is like the... It's by another lady of color. Ah, crap, what was it? Um, My wife's reading one book by her right now. I actually All just right. finished it. And I've just got it in my feed to what read. But I'm listening to the other one, so let me look at it real quick. Um... Amazon. Sorry, guys. I like talking about weird stuff because I've been looking for more stuff for than just what I'm used to for my fantasy stuff so I can come up with ideas for my RPGs and things. So, Right. Okay. So the lady that I'm currently reading right now, the book is called The N... Her, her name is N.K. Jemison. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one that my wife just finished was the fifth season. I just started, um, let's see here, The 100,000 Kingdoms, I believe, is the one I just started. Mm, I haven't it's heard a, that one before. It's an audio book. It's really good so far. It's like, it takes place a little bit in the future. But it's not on our Earth. It's on a different Earth. So, but it's really good. I'm really enjoying her work. Cool. So, Yeah. Anyway, I, I can't listen to audiobooks. Wow. They put me to sleep. They put um, me to sleep. That's sad. Okay. All right. So I need a dark brown. Uh, and I don't have an oat brown at all. Let me look over here at my 
I have a dragon red. I got an ancient oak. I need to find that. That's I was in just going to say there was an ancient oak in one of the boxes. Yeah, let me find it. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, look. Chuck's alive. Hey, it's Chuck. Did he message you back? Oh, he was busy. All right. Man, it's getting hot in here. It's the whiskey talking. <laughs> no doubt. Didn't you say there was a shot of cinnamon in that? No, it's just it 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 it's got a flavor of cinnamon in it. I'm only halfway through this drink. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm feeling it. Ah, I got a clog. I'm really uh -oh. enjoying these. I mean, if I had the full range, I probably would do it, but the full range of these paints is like four hundred dollars. What? Yeah. That's like a couple hundred paints, like four a hundred paints. Now I'm I'm only like thirty paints away from having the full range of the army painter, but the guy from Imperial said he was going to hook me up with the his next wave of paints too. Yeah. So I'm excited about I'm that. Excited. I'm excited. I'm very excited to see where they're coming. Whoa! Whoa! What was that? They're very coming excited. Up with hey, it's yeah. Chuck. Is he in here with us? He certainly is. Hey, yeah. Chuck. You're online. You're you're live right now, by the way. I know. All right. Hey, you know what I'm drinking right now, buddy? I'm sorry? I said, do you know what I'm drinking while we're painting models? Some sort of liquid refreshment. I don't know. Wild Turkey 101. Let me turn you up. I can hear it. <laughs> I had you down to 30%. Thanks, man. I see how I can feel it right now. I said Wild Turkey 101. And he's blaming it on you, Chuck. Oh, know. it's all my fault. You don't even want to know some of the stories I know, Dale. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, uh, I just naturally assume. So, Chuck, we've we've got some uh, we got a set of paint that we would like to get rid of. Uh, I mean, raffle off, raffle off. Um, I think we should just give it to uh, let's just give it to Megasario 3000. Uh, no, no, no. You got to enter in. We can't just give it to Megasario. I mean, he is. Fine, Daniel. I mean, he's. Oh God, you shaved your beard. Yeah, I did. Do you like that? You look human. I know. I he looks I, cute, I was looking. Doesn't he? It looks like he's like 16 or something, and just on the football team. <laughs> He's a baby face, those pitchable cheeks. Oh my gosh, Lord Jesus, help these guys! Wow, I'm telling you what, this uh, this Twitch reporter shows three people in the stream, and there's a lot more than three. Yeah, yeah I know. I noticed that too. It also says that we're doing GM Tricks of the Trade number eighty, but I don't think that's right either. No, if I, if I, the, if... the problem with that is that has to be set before you go live. If you don't yeah, set go live, it's, it's done deal. Daniel, are you supposed to be setting that? No, I don't know how. No, he doesn't have access to it. The only person that does is just a few people, and I, unfortunately, that's mainly me, and I've just been out of pocket. Well, actually, I'm having somebody coming on next week to try to help me with some things, and I'm going to put her in charge of naming the streams. Hey, Chuck, are we going to give anything away from Troll Lords as well? Uh, Bush, giving away, by the way? I'm giving away a paint set, man. Paints. A, a, a intro to paint set. Listen, hold say Obsidian Risk. You saying Bush Mills is better than Wild Turkey? That's fighting words, and you're not allowed to be in the raffle. Obsidian won something the other day. He's a big. He's always winning something. I know. I know. Nah, he could be in the raffle. He could be in the raffle, but he he's not gonna win. You know, I found out something about Jameson. You know, from Jameson's Irish whiskey. So like. He was really, like, weird and stuff. Like, he wanted to see cannibalism. So, he actually went to one of those islands where people still ate people. And he bought a slave girl and gave her to the cannibals so he could watch them eat her. What are you talking about? I am about? dead serious. It was on the news, like, talking about some history stuff. And are you kidding me? No. That is, like... Some sick businessman. Yeah. Wait, has he not shipped that out yet, Obsidian? That what? His set of Imperial paints. Yeah, that's all on uh, the Imperial guy. He was supposed to ship that out. Did no? Uh, it's Daniel's fault. It's Daniel's no, it's fault. not. No, it's not. He got the information, so you might want to follow up with him. So, by the ew. way, yeah, ooh, ooh is what he gave me. 
It's over the Jameson comment. What? All right, let me see here. You're giving away a paint set, you said? <laughs> yeah, a Reaper paint set. <laughs> Almost been removed as a winner. The raffle's been canceled. What's oh, going on? That's what happens, man. You people get on here and start talking about my, my whiskey. So, Reaper. It's a Reaper paint set. It is model number, set number 909970. Oh, nine, 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 that's fine. Uh, have you got a link to it? No, because I'm currently painting a model at the moment. Maybe one day when oh, I grow a third man. arm. Chuck, Jessica's trying to be like, you need to stay home Saturday. Because my aunt's coming over. It's her birthday. And my response... Right. Um. And my response was, it's your aunt, not mine. <laughs> Let me see here. So, the needle pulling me. thread, was that a riddle? Also, Daniel, anytime we run giveaways on the channel, you have to be a follower to win. Okay. So well, you, you okay? Hey, everybody. In order to win this, you have to follow the channel right now. And if you don't, you won't win it. Period. <laughs> I love you guys. I just wanted to say it really mean because Chuck's being really mean right now. All right. You hear that? T that ticky tappy? That's Chuck being a hacker man. No, it's Dale talking to your uh, oh. users. and. Uh... Oh. So it's Dale on his keyboard from the 1980s. All right, so this Reaper paint set, you wish. Daniel, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, okay, so I actually talked about it at the beginning of the show, and we're currently using a... Well, I just need to know something. It's a Reaper... Is it Reaper Miniatures paint set? Yes, it is a Reaper Miniatures starter paint set. Uh, the number of it is 09970. It comes with a case. Okay, it has not been opened. There is the tag that shows it has not been opened, the zip tie from Reaper. Um, it is colors... Muddy brown, pure white, tan skin, cloudy gray, uh, pale saffron, turf green, wow. twilight purple, solid black, heraldic red, oceanic blue, skeleton bone, dragon gold, and blade steel. So how many paints does it have? It has 13 paints in it. Nice. And a case. Right. You, you hear that? Now? Yeah, go ahead and start it. You, or, or if you want to post it and be like, listen, people. Get in here. Daniel's getting ready to give something away like he normally does because nobody else comes in here unless he's giving something away. Uh, right, so. Sorry. Seems like I need to look at something on here, though. So I'm painting. I took that ancient oak, and I'm painting all the um, excess wood with it. So I'm... I feel kind of limited right now. Right, I'm just going to start this thing. Let's see what happens here. <sighs> there you go. It's live. Please give us a follow and use raffle to enter the raffle. Why are you doing it, Daniel? <laughs> I mean, I can't take you out of it. Can I? Can I exit myself? Am I doing? No, you can't. All right. If we, if I win, we'll give uh, it to somebody win, else. I can draw somebody else. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to uh -huh. see if it I, if if it would actually work since I was a mod. Why would it not? <laughs> Cause I'm a mod. I'm considered a mod. I didn't know if mods could. About that. I let everybody enter them. Doesn't matter if you're a mod or whatever. So Dale, I am experiencing some issues with these paints now. Yeah. All right, that's gonna go for seven minutes. Okay, and then will it automatically kick uh, and and choose a winner? No, um, I'm going to uh... be back in seven minutes apparently. Well, I'm going to mute myself for a minute, yeah, and then we'll be back. But, yeah, okay. no, I'll have to do it. It's okay. a manual. All right. All right, so. Because sometimes people will, like, into the raffle they're not supposed to. So well, so, and no one, so far no one's entered, except Daniel. Well, that's a good point. No one's entered so far. So really? It's, it's, Obsidian it's, Risk says I already won one, so I won't. No, enter. You, can enter, you can enter Obsidian Risk. 
You can enter Who into it. Nobody else wants this giveaway. See, no. I, was gonna, I was. I wish you would have waited. Why? I would have. Because I could have promoted it and got a bunch. Of Listen, I post about it all day today. Yeah, and I'm just saying. You know, but I'll do this. I've been we seriously talking about this for the last month. Have I not, Dale? We could have, we could have put yep. it in a newsletter. I could have had other people well, share it out. I could have posted it in the Discord. Well, if nobody wins it tonight, then we can do it next week. Well, that's a fair point. So, I'm, I'm just saying, I've literally been posting about this. I've been talking about it for the last month. Seriously. I'm going to be like, on Reaper Night, we're giving away a paint set. I've literally been saying this the entire time. And nobody's been like... I can't, oh. I can't take you serious without your beard. I'm just going to be honest. Listen, listen. It's okay. It's, if Malastar still has right. his beard, I don't. The reason being... I, I, I'll tell you later. I shaved mine off the other day, and it's already grown back halfway. I'm going to shave. I swear, I never have no problem with hair. I'll have to, I'll have to tell you later. I'll tell you later. I'll, I'll tell you Saturday when I'm over your house. So, well, let's see. You men who can't enter. keep a beard can't oh i can beard or i can keep a beard i'm, I'm growing it out it. and then three Dang months it. later i can't stand it anymore i'm cutting it off and I'm it's not like it. commit you guys commit before i forget okay <laughs> before yes. i forget unless yes. things change after next week not yeah. this coming week but the next week you won't have a show <gasps> what We're happened closing all of our shows down that week okay why uh we're gonna have streams every day with guests. But, but I not this week, that. but next week next week. Right. That next week's when it's slotted, but I'm still working on guests, so we'll see what happens. Uh oh, how do I become yeah, a guest? Yeah, said for us to wait. I, if you want to wait, we can wait and do this next week if you want. Give us some time to kind of prime it up. Well, I've already I've already mentioned it out. Like if anybody Like if City and Risk is, says let's wait, nobody else has entered into it. I, I say if, if if we get like five people entering in the next two minutes or however lo that's long it's left, then let's go for it. But if not, then let's just say fuck it and go. And Willie. Willie's on here. Yeah, Willie. Vamp's on here. Dino's on here. Yeah, there are a lot of familiar names, Chuck. But, yeah. You know. It's almost though if and I'm I'm not gonna mean this in a weird way, Willie. If Willie was to win this. It would probably be it would probably be cheaper for me to go to Amazon Canada and order it there and ship it to him, versus oh, versus me shipping it from my house. I'm just saying. No, you're absolutely right. It's terrible about shipping, man. You have to tell me that. Yeah. So, and I need to br uh, bring in the dragon to your house this Saturday. By the way. You what? I'm bringing. You? The, yeah. So you can go ahead and get the auction set up for the dragon because Dale is wanting to win this dragon. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. So we might need to need to wait for that one after we get that stupid week by us. But yeah. Well, I know, but I mean, I'm just bringing it to you because I'm not going to be holding on to it because I need to clear yeah. out my office some. So, um, well, uh, you I could just ship it to me, Daniel, and be done with it. Well, if you want to pay five hundred dollars, ship it to me, Daniel. Uh -oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh, ship it to me, Daniel. <laughs> I know. I should be writing hip hop there. Hey, no. Um, but no, seriously, Dale. Actually, what Dale's gonna do is he's up in his Patreon to thirty dollars a month, and he's gonna buy me that huge honking new adult red dragon from Whiz Kids, so I can paint that for him. That's what he wants. Set on. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm giving Dale a hard well, time. What do you think here? Should we hang it out and see, or what? Uh, let's just give it a few more minutes, cause I don't think nobody's. How long has it been? Uh, oh, I just closed the stream out. I don't know. Hold on a minute. Hey, I'm missing my needle. Where did it go? And I also closed out Streamlabs as well. That's brilliant. That's not Excellent. great. I wish I could. Ahead. That's what I like. This mouse is acting kind of weird. It's been doing it a lot. Double clicking. I don't know what, why it's doing it for. Chuck's supposed to call Reaper and get me a... Yeah. Or send, send, out. send an email to Reaper about getting me set up as a, you know. So, four minutes have passed, and we have one entry, Haunted Holler Painting. I heard he's a pretty decent dude, though. I don't know. I could that. enter, too, you know, if you need some competition. <laughs> but I generally don't enter these things because of that uh, previously mentioned uh, shipping issue. 
Well, Chuck needs yeah, to to give me the ability to run these as well. Cause you know, Chuck, you might you might be sick one day, and I might have to get on here and help Stephen Chenault. So, um, I am going to comment real quick, guys, about these paints, about something I I dislike. Gibber. <clears throat> All right. These bottles. I'm gonna look at this one. This right here is purple, right? Do you see this bottle? Yeah. What can you tell me about this bottle? I'm waiting for the video to catch up. They have crummy labels. Besides, besides the labels, we've already had this discussion. All right, Chuck, would you ship something out that had a label like this on it? Hold on, let me switch back because there's something weird going on. This is what I'm getting at: is the clarity of the bottles. Oh yeah, oh. that's right. You um. Well, these are probably actually, it says they're made in the USA, Ripper Mini, but they're actually in some warehouse somewhere and they're paying someone to do this. Or no, I'm talking about the clarity. The, the clarity of the yeah, plastic. Like on the, are you talking about clarity on the bottle, the clearness of it? Yeah, like it's really hard. Like normally I could be like, oh, I can tell this color right here. With my, my other colors, I can be like, these colors, this is, this is barbarian flesh. And I can grab it off the wall. Like, I could see Barbarian Flesh right here. I'm pointing to it right now. But, like, these colors here, because they are so opaque, they're not opaque opaque. Like, the... I'm not complaining about these like I would complain about the bottles from Imperial. Lord knows I'm experiencing the Imperial issue where their bottles are black, right? These bottles... They trick you like, oh, well, this color is really gray. But, no, it's purple. And you're like, oh, crap. So, All right. but you see what I'm saying, though, like the 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 issue that I'm having. And this is the whole point of this series right now is to talk about these beginner sets and and complain about them. It's I, really it's truly it. I mean, it's to talk about these beginner sets and um, I, I don't I'm, I'm not liking them. Um, and it's just because of this this plastic and again, it's not so much the paint you don't like; it's the no. packaging. No, let's let's talk, and, and I will talk about this here real quick. So I cannot buy these at my local store. Okay, my local guy Dwayne, the Lord bless his heart, he is. This has been my comic book shop. Like the first comic book shop I ever went to was Mountain Empire Comics in Kingsport, Tennessee. Okay, Mountain Empire Comics was great. It became Evermore Comics, and it became Mount Empire again, and, and all this other stuff. But the problem was that that's where I first played Dungeons and Dragons, and it was second edition. It was great, awesome. I bought my first set of dice at Mountain Empire Comics. Right, I still have those from 1992. They're a set of opaque Chessex Blue opaque dice. Um, you so 1992. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, I know. I know. You were what, like 57. <laughs> you were just out of high school, that weren't you? Ageist. I can't believe how ageist you are. I know. I was giving. I'm giving Chuck. Between Chuck, I Chuck and I, I, so between uh, Chuck and I, we're at least fifty to sixty so, times your age. Okay? So here, here's the thing about me and Chuck. I love Chuck to death. Chuck is is my dad. Oh my lord! You shot close to telling. No, nah, he's not really my dad, but Chuck, Chuck's the guy that that I, I've literally. Stop talking about Chuck. No, it, hold hold on a second. Okay, oh, I'm on your pedestal because you're about to be worshipped. No, um, I lost I lost my real dad about six years ago. I lost my stepfather, the guy who raised me. My uh, my he's my real dad. My stepfather is. He's the guy who raised me. I lost him two years ago, but Chuck has been the guy who that has to me has been a father to me in the last two years and i love chuck to death and i'm i'm, I'm not saying that to suck up chuck because chuck knows i give him such a hard time during the day anyway oh, yeah. uh but I, I do love chuck and i give him a hard time he's just he he's not that much older than me guys i but he has been uh, he's been there for me he's listened to me he's listened to me gripe and complain he's given me advice and i love him to death and and he's he's an awesome dude but um, anyway, so long story short, Dwayne's. Dwayne's has been running a shop since 1994. Dwayne's World Comics and Games, okay, in Kingsport, Tennessee. It's amazing. I love it. Um, let's see here. 
but the 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 cool thing is though, I can get almost any paint in the world at Dwayne's except for Reaper, unless it's in these one of these box sets. Okay, it is only because, and I've asked Dwayne about this, and he says it is really hard for me to order Reaper paints. I will order them for you if you want them, but I do not enjoy ordering these paints because it's something about their ordering system. It's horrible. He can't stand it. And he just won't carry them in stock. So, and I'm going to talk about this real quick. So, in the bottle that I'm going to show you is not a, it's it's something else in it, but it's the it, it's a repurposed army painter bottle. So, the 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 bottles I'm showing right now, one is the Reaper bottle and one is the army painter bottle. The Reaper bottle, if I was to actually tell you how much paint is in this, it's 12 milliliters of paint. Okay, the army painter bottle is 18 milliliters of paint. I've got it repurposed for a Citadel paint right now, but it's 18 milliliters of paint. Okay. The um, the the Reaper bottle almost runs $4 a bottle. Okay. Here's my issue. The Army Painter bottle is still $3. It's more paint for a less amount of a price. As long as you mix your paints good... They are amazing from Army Painter. Hey fellas, I'm gonna I'm gonna duck out of here. I gotta go make a All right, I'll see you, I'll see you Saturday, buddy. Yeah, be fair. See you Dale. Be good, buddy. All right. I love you, Chuck. You too. Love you too, man. All right. Anyway, but but this is where I'm this is my complaint, guys. Okay. I love every one of you. I don't want to steer you wrong. Okay. As of right now, going into the hobby, if you're just now buying paint. Just now, unless you have some sort of crazy buy American made only crap thing going on in your life, if you say buy American paints, hands down right now, Reaper's the cheapest. Okay. Now, would I say buy Reaper? Um aside from having to mix their paints up, they're okay. The Imperial paints are better than the Reaper paints. I'm just going to tell you that now. I do like the way they go on better. Uh, that Are they more opaque? No, they're more of a um, glaze. A very a pigmented glaze, okay? They're, they're really good paints, the Imperials are. The Reapers are great if you're a beginner, okay? And actually, if you're a more of an advanced painter, they're pretty good too. I know a lot of guys who love these that are more of an advanced painter because they don't use washes. They use the triad system from Reaper, which is great. They have a great triad system. But if you're looking for bang for your buck, Army Painter is the way to go because the you get more paint per milliliter for the price that you pay. I'm just, and I'm just telling you this now, because, and I'm going to tell you, this is actually kind of making it hard to paint tonight. Okay. And the reason being is I'm having issues looking at these paints, trying to figure out which paint I want to use. Okay. Um, I would say part of it is my mixing ability with these paints, but it's not. Um, I can mix these paints, paints fairly well. Um, and, uh, again, a lot of it is going to be just the fact that I'm dealing with these paints and I'm not enjoying them at the moment because of the bottles. And I, it kind of sounds snobbish. I know it does. But, and I don't mean for it to sound snobbish. So I'm, I'm totally not exactly getting what the problem with the bottles is. They're, it's hard to see the colors to the bottles, man. Okay. Okay, and, and what I mean by that, and, and I, I feel like I'm coming off really bad, but like the... No, no, no harm, no foul, just, you know. Yeah, it's just like, like a lot, a lot of, like, if I can't read the label, I have to look at the bottle. And these labels... Yeah. You know, I th there's no color on the labels. They're black and white. Okay, yeah. um, I'm not able to to tell what's going on on the label. Um, it's, if I can't read the name of it, I have to look at the bottle, and it's hard for me to tell with these bottles. With the Army Painter, they're a little bit more translucent, and then the bottles that I transparent. use, or transparent. Sorry, they're a little bit more transparent, 
And the bottles that I actually use for my re uh, my Citadel paints, okay, they're fairly clear when I when I put my Citadel paints in new bottles. So like I can tell what paint I'm grabbing off the shelf, but these are just they they add a level of white. It's it it almost makes me feel like I'm painting with craft paint. Um. On these, you know. Does it, does that sound bad? Does it sound small? No, 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 no. It doesn't. Um, I, I, my problem is I'm looking at the paints and I don't have any problem telling them apart. Yeah. So then the first thing I think is is this an effect of Daniel's red green red green color blindness? Is it <sighs> maybe blue green? Maybe maybe. I don't. I don't. I don't know because I you know I can, I can see the colors through the bottle. Um, enough that I can tell but I, I certainly see what you're saying about uh, you know the printing of, of the labels and stuff yeah. and I do wonder if they're you know like for the Imperial fellows like I don't mind the black bottles but yeah they definitely need some sort of swatch system um, yeah. and what I'll probably know, end up little... doing on these is the same thing I did with the Imperials okay and what I did with I and well of course I put the Imperial already had a drop of color on each lid like I do that automatically on paints that I've had for a while if you look at this blue I put a swatch of paint on top of that but what yeah, I'll probably end up doing is put a swatch of paint on the actual label itself and that'll help me out and, and I feel like I'm being a jerk about this but I really don't want to sound like really snobbish when it comes to these paints but like the the I, I'm having issues with them tonight by picking picking the colors that I want to use. And now this blue guy don't really count because I'm playing around with him. He's just one I'm just picking around on, and it's like I'm playing with a new color. And the the reason why I went with blue is um, there is a race of um, of uh, in, in Warhammer Age of Sigmar these lizard people, and one of my friends is like, you know, he plays them in and. and his are blue, you know, so mm -hmm. they're, that's, that's what he wants, so, um, and usually I use, a, when I paint his stuff, I use a light blue on that, and then I can go in there with green highlights, like a really pale aqua highlight, and go in there, and I'm not done with him yet, um, and if you notice, I have missed a few spots as well, like I did beforehand, that's another reason why I chose yellow, is like these spots that I missed missed um, are actually they're they're showing really good. You know what I'm saying? I could tell where I missed missed this at. So, um, and that's another thing with when you don't have a wash that you're going to use that you can actually see where you've messed up pretty bad. So, um, you know, and and you don't have that to rely on, and. Personally, I think that as a beginner, you need to have something like a wash to rely on. If, especially if you're not going to get into high-end painting, like, you know, going in there and doing, you know, your the three levels. You know, you've got your your darks and mids and highs. You're, you're going to need to, to get in there and do something like that. Um, so, I'm probably going to use a... Actually, I, I do have two washes I'm going to probably end up using here in a minute. And and their citadel washes. So, but so the other thing I don't like about these paints so far. I mean, I just, this is just the ba the paint set itself. And I've talked about this. I've told you in the past that one of the main things. I'm sorry, I'm getting up right now, and I'm grabbing mm -hmm. some washes. Uh, one of the main things that I've talked about that you really need uh, when you are. Um, I don't know how well you can hear me right now. But one of the well, we can hear you fine. Uh, one of the things that you really, really need is a lot of brown, a lot of different types of browns. Where you yes. know, yeah. an oak brown, a leather brown, uh, a bone color. You know, this one did come with the bone color, but I can't tell if this is the bone color or if this is the skin color. Which I think this is the skin that I just picked up, but it's really hard to tell because I can't. You know, the labels are faded. So, uh, sorry, I feel like I'm complaining a lot tonight. <laughs> oh, it's, I found a bone. There it is. It all works. It all works. So, I feel bad about it. 
people don't feel bad so. just stop feeling bad okay everyone's got an opinion i know um what are you doing here what's the point of this tonight we're doing the demo of beginner's paints and if yeah. you're a beginner and you can't see the paint through the bottle too then you're going to get frustrated yeah and you know uh, if you can't read the label then you're not going to know if you've got the right color of green or yellow or whatever it is that you're looking for so these are all legitimate so um, here's the thing about you know, i will tell you about these paints okay they have a system, okay? They do have a system. And these paints, you buy your starter set, okay? Base colors, right? You buy the starter set. Then there's a set that comes after this, okay? And it's called Highlights, okay? So you learn to paint with these base colors, blocking everything in. Then you come back with the highlight colors, and you learn to layer. You do your highlights, like I did on the shells. You remember how I did mm -hmm. the shells here? With the yep. highlights and stuff yep. like that, so that's what that's that, called painting that, technique that everyone right. should learn. Right. Us, right, and and they do have that system, but the problem is though you have to spend money to get that. Like this paint set mm -hmm. is not cheap. I think this paint set retails for like thirty well, bucks, and then the next yeah, so level. Let's, and, let's just step. Let's just step back a uh, half a half a step here and realize that this is a company that's designed to sell things to make money yeah, no. primarily right I know. so that that's another consideration for 30 bucks with uh, in my mind if i was going out to find a beginner paint set for my kid who wants to paint miniatures i would expect that the beginner set would get him through his first couple of dozen models in terms of quantity of paint and selection of color and I would pay 30 bucks for that. But w the message I'm getting tonight is that you're not going to get a starter set for 30 bucks. Not you're going to get one. some of a starter set. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a good starter set. Yeah. I mean, and, and I guess that's because I, the way I teach, you know, I teach these kids how to paint. And I'm applying some, uh, check it out. You might like that. I did orange on the his little... What what did you call that earlier on his neck? The back his of his fringe. Head? His fringe. I did orange. Um, oh, that works too. So, um, you know, and I I I, I, I stayed sloppy with this for a reason, just to make it look like a beginner's painting job. Mm -hmm. But the, um, but yeah, like the, I, you know, I think army painter is the way to go so far. Now, I would like to do a Citadel paint set, but um, I'll have to piece that together out of what I got. They didn't send me anything. Uh, yeah. Citadel's really hard to get donations from. Uh, I've tried to get <sighs> donations from them in the past to, to do Gary Con with and things like that. And they're like, well, you have to contact us five years in advance. And <sighs> not really five years, but you know what I mean. So uh, yeah. the color I'm using right now is called Drakenhawk Nightshade. It's from Citadel, it's a shade. It's a blue shade, um, and that I'm going to be putting this on our our teal model. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my favorite colors, by the way, um, to do this with. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to fill in all our spots that we missed. We're going to, it's going to shade the model fairly well. And again, this is the thing I tell beginners all the time: just use washes because uh, this is the easiest way to get a good good result especially if you're not going to get serious about painting so is that what you're applying now is it is like a blue shaded wash yeah well they okay uh, citadel calls them shades but uh, it's essentially a wash so okay um, now if this was uh, army paint or not i do have a blue army painter shade the problem is though i don't like outside of army painters um strong tone i don't mm -hmm. like army painter shades uh, they're too thick and if they're not too thick they're too thin so sure. i know it's just one of those things man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. just like crummy bottles and crummy labels yeah i know i know i feel like just i went off on a rant tonight that i mean that it's not a good rant but it's a rant that i it was deserved I don't even think it was a rant. I think you were pretty gentle. I don't know. It's just it's frustrating. And 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 that's a good thing. 
That's a good thing because you're able to be critical about what you're doing without, you know, getting into like weird personal invective and blah, 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 blah. You know? uh, yes. Just frustrating. I just, like, I mean, you know, my comment just moments ago about you're, you're, uh, it doesn't seem you're getting a proper beginner set for 30 bucks. No. And, 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 and that's largely irrelevant because that's what my expectations are. The reality is, is that if you're going out to buy beginner paints, you might have to spend more than 30 bucks. And you shouldn't and have to do that. Uh, no, no. And we should all be able to sprout green gauzy wings and fly to Mars for the weekend too, Daniel. But the fact is um, that forewarned is forearmed. And that's a real value that you're giving people in the channel. Yeah. Right. You're pointing out here are things that I have trouble with and you might have trouble with, too. Um, as we've said, um, the paints are OK, but everything else around them needs improvement. Yeah. But again, you know, don't underestimate the fact that this is a company that needs to make money and don't under underestimate the fact that Army Painter as a company knows this and they're going to say, we're going to add a couple extra millimeters to our bottles and not charge more. And our beginner set's going to have um, a better selection of paints or more paints well, as now, their will, way will... of being competitive. That's all I'm saying. Right, yeah. But the thing about the Army Painter paints is, like, you don't get all the colors that I think you need. But you no, still get that's that, true, too. You still get that and wash. you pointed that out on several occasions, too. Yeah. And that's great, you know. So you're just doing the same thing with these pa yeah. paints. And, uh, you know. But you still get that wash, though, that, that that I believe that beginners really need. So if you're not going to use a wash as a beginner, you need to use a dark primer like black. But again, using black as a primer is an issue because you're going to have to layer upon layer your colors if you're, you know, you're trying to... If you're going you know, to overcome that darkness. Yeah, and that's the issue, you know. Like, could you so, imagine painting any of the yellow spots on either of these models tonight against a black primer? You'd still be trying to get a yellow coat on. Yeah, at this point. yeah, it would. I would have to airbrush it. I'd have to put down white. I really would. Yeah. So, um, so what I've done here is I've added the the uh, Dragon Hawk Night Shade to this model. So it's going to fill in the areas that it needs to shade. And to this model, I've added what's called Beltan Green. Okay. Um, it's actually going to stain the yellow down some, um, and then I'm going to actually go back and put some black shades on some stuff and some brown shades as well here in a minute as I let this dry. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the little lid that I use for shades, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to grab my, looking all right, though, so. my homemade brown right here. Like that literally cost me $2 to make. Because you gotta realize this is mostly water, so yep. And and that's another thing they don't like when you point that out that most of the stuff's water. <laughs> yep. Well, so, a lot of people don't like a lot of things. That's just yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, I know. All right, so I'm gonna take this brown here, and I'm gonna come in on this. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the mic, guys. I'm gonna come in right here, and I'm gonna hit the leather here with the brown, and then I'm gonna hit. The this for some odd reason this oak color is kind of a purple to me. You know, I know it's not, you know. Yeah. So, but anyway, I could, but it's funny. I you know I understood what you were saying when you were talking about that color not coming through as vividly in the bottom yeah. and it being difficult. And because where, I could see how you could easily mistake some of the uh, the opacity of the actual bottle material for yeah. making that gray look kind of lavendery. Yeah, and and part of that also is that the fact that you've been doing this with me for how long now? So, a um, couple of couple of weeks, anyway. I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I don't have a good time reference for that one. Yeah. Seems like so, forever, man. Well, you're getting used to you're getting used to the way I complain about stuff and uh, things like that. I think that's that's part of it. Uh, learning learning me a little bit, you learn how I complain. So yeah, and I don't think you complain as much as you think you do. Well, I feel like I do. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a feeling. It's not logical or fact based. Yeah, I know. All right. So the the last thing I would do to these guys. Um, 
and I'm, I have to wait for this to dry a little bit, is that I would take, uh, there's a skull on here. Um, it's right here on the model. I would okay. hit this with the skull white once all this dries. I'd probably hit this guy again with green all over, uh, mm -hmm. just because it would stain this down a little bit more. Um, and I really wanted to keep this a really bright color and start oh, bringing it in. Yeah, so, um, oh, but, and then do the bases and the toenails, and I would consider these guys done. So, um, after, after maybe another layer of wash on top of them, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, okay, so like, let's, let's go back and look at those sets that we've talked about so far this time. So, we've done craft paint, okay. We've done the imperial hobby paints. I'm, I'm backing away right. from the table right now. So, we've done the imperial hobby paints. We've done craft paint. We've done um, Army Painter, and we've done Reaper tonight. So the Army Painter, um, again, has been... Um, <sighs> okay, i got a kid yelling over there. My wife's trying to put our youngest to bed, and he's mad. That's what it sounds like. Okay, so I'm going to rank these so far from worst to best, okay? So, and, and what and here's my qualifications, how well the paint went on the opacity of the paint, and whether or not I consider this a beginner paint set. Okay. First paint set is going to be, uh, the worst paint set is the craft paint. Okay. Uh, mainly because the opacity wasn't there. I was fighting the paint the entire time. You heard me complain about it. I didn't like it. It was just really annoying as crap. Um, the, sec the second one, and, and the only reason... Uh, I'm, this paint is where it is is because of the fact that it's not for beginners and that is the Imperial Hobby paints. Now, I love the Imperial Hobby paints. I really do. And, you know, if they came to me today and said, listen, Daniel, we are going to sponsor your show by giving you paints. We're going to be your paint sponsor. Um, I would literally shelf every other paint during the paint show and use those and teach you how to use those paints. Okay. But they're not for beginners. Okay. Um, you have to use a little bit of a better technique with them. If you look at this model here that I painted with, with, with them, uh, the wizard. Okay. Um, they are very translucent. Okay. You have to learn different things to, to paint with these paints you have to learn brush control because um, it will streak when you're painting with these paints um, if you don't apply it evenly. Um, but the colors are vivid. You don't have to shake your paints up because they are a liquid pigment suspended in a new type of medium. They're great. Then, um, If you look over here, even with their... Remember how much I hated their, their shade, right? This is the, the Minotaur that I painted on the show with them. They have this awesome thing where you mix their colors with their their silver and you can get a metallic in any color that you want, which I think is amazing. I love these paints. Would I recommend them to a beginner? No. Um, at this point now, the next one will be the Reaper paints. Okay, The next level is the Reaper paints. They're, they're number two. Out of the four that we've tested so far. Uh, the reason that they are... I mean, they're very pigmented. They they um, mix fairly well. If you know anything about Reaper, um, they do have metal models that they, they, they do. Okay? So, what they end up doing is in all their paint... This is all filled in the United States. Made in the United States. They cut up those metal models. The white metal models... And that they have a bad run on, and they use those as paint agitators. So they put those little bits of metal inside of your paint in order so you can shake them up. So you do not have to add an agitator. So, um, and and that's actually a a big thing to deal with. Are you there? I think you were talking and it was really low. I'm sorry. Say again. Oh, I thought I heard you talking. It was just really low. Um, no, no. Okay. Not saying a thing listening, bro. Okay. Now, and then the next one's Army Painters, and it's only because they were are designed to paint quickly, get the paints out there, and and take people with no skill and make it look 
fairly decent. The issues with Army Painter is they don't come with a paint agitator. The paint settles to the bottom really easy, okay? So if your paint's been setting for more than two weeks, then you're going to have a hard time shaking it up unless you actually go in there, mechanically mix it up with a stick, or shake it with a paint stirrer that, like the the paint mixer that I have on my desk. So, right. So you so far that I would still recommend. You know, we're looking at, and I added cost mentally there as well. So, uh, craft paint. If you're on a budget and that's all you got, and you really want to get into painting models, get the craft paint. I'm not trying to tell you not to get the craft paint. You might like it, but I don't. But I've been painting for. Since 1994, that's that's when I started painting models. Was 94, um, when I really started doing it for Warhammer. I started playing Warhammer back in 1994. Well, let's talk a little more practically about that. Is the craft paint cost effective for a beginner? For a beginner, if you yeah. if you don't mind putting multiple coats on, um, and you don't mind, uh, so, you know, if you're a beginner, you're not you don't know that you're fighting against the paint. Okay, that's another thing. You don't know that you're actually fighting against that paint. So, I mean, you're spending um, this bottle here, 59 milliliters. This is a toasted marshmallow. I use it for parchment. If I add white to it, I use it as bone. Okay, uh, 59 millimeters. That was a um, dollar. I mean, think about that. Sounds like a, a giveaway. Yeah. Right? So well, if you're and buying that fictional paint kit for yeah, your kid. That yeah. That would be the way to start. Yeah. Out. If you're if you're buying it for a kid, just starting out. But but they might get so oh, frustrated with the hobby, though. That's the only thing I'm concerned about yeah. is that they might get so frustrated with the hobby that they might just say, "No, I don't want to do this anymore." But the the thing is, though, I mean, if you're on a budget and that's all you got, and you know that you're going to be dealing with this stuff. Then, if that's what you want to do, then do it. I mean, I'm not going to stop. Hmm. Now, the thing about, I've noticed, though, about the new versions of these paints. I've had some old ones, too, in the past. They don't separate. I don't know what it is uh, about these paints. They don't separate at all. Uh, these last few years, I've noticed this about these apple barrel and plaid paints. So, if you know anything about American craft paints... Um, they're pretty much all made by the same company. Um, I, the only company that does it like that are not like plaidonline.com or plaid makes Apple Barrel. They make um, a few of the other ones. The ones that they don't make are the Craft Smart paints, um, and those are the paints that you can get. Um, I think those are the uh, paints that are used by the Martha Stewart stuff. Uh, but they're um, same 59 milliliters. Um, let's see here. Where are they bottled at? These are bottled in Irvine, Texas. That's the Craft Smart. And the Plaid is bottled in Georgia. So they're American made paints. I mean, you can go with them that way. The um, But yeah, if you're into it that way, I mean. The uh, but cost effectiveness out of everything though if if we're just not say craft paint we're just gonna say hobby paints the cost, your cost your best cost is gonna be the army painter but the thing with the army painter is you have to buy agitators to throw in there army painter actually sells their own agitators that you can buy these little metal ball bearings I've actually got a box of them over here on my desk somewhere hold on they're probably under a pile of boxes over here just a minute ago I'm gonna they sell these little metal agitators right here. You get a hundred of them for four dollars. So they don't rust. Um, I, this is a mark I have from something else. But you know, the, the, you get a hundred of these for four dollars. You do a hundred bottles of paint with this. Um, I usually put two agitators in my bottles um, because of the weight. Um, if I can get these, they make these little 10 millimeter glass beads that you can sometimes get fairly cheap. You can get like a strand of 20 for $3 at the hobby store. Um, those actually work really good as well. They actually have a hole through them. So the problem with the metal ball bearings is they actually go into the nipple. So you feel like you have oh, a clog. Yeah. You don't really have a clog. The ball bearing went in there. You actually have to hold the bottle a certain way to keep the ball bearing from going in there. So. Oh, heavens. 
Yeah, so, I mean, uh, right now, as of right now, this is where we're at. Army Painter, you're number one. Reaper, you're p- pushing number two. Imperial's pushing three because of the fact that it's not a beginner set. Um, it's a great set. I'm just going to say that. It's a great set, but it's not a beginner set. Um, and and they, they're coming out with more colors, too. And I think they will put together a beginner set. We've been talking back and forth a lot. Um, and, you know, I'm going to be giving them ideas and stuff like that. And you got the craft paint. I think next week I will try, or the next time we, we have a show, um, I'm going to see if I can actually, um, out of all my, um, I think I do have a full set of Citadel beginner set um, on my wall, just where I've pa- paint over time. So I'll, I'll, I'll slap together um, a Citadel beginner set. And then I think I can slap together the model color, uh, the Leho model color, uh, Middle Evil paint set, which is great for D and D stuff. So we should be good on that. So I think we I'm got about two, bo- seeing both of those. two more shows, and then we go back to regular stuff where I paint uh, Dale's Adult Red Dragon. So um, you know, I'm running with that joke for a while. You know that, right? You keep on plugging that man as hard as you can. You flog yeah. it for all it's worth. You know, I, I I'm I'm probably going to end up printing out the uh, the model, the adult red dragon model from uh, from Fat Dragon Games again. So I might end up painting yeah. that one for you and sending it up to you. Well, I might actually. I've I've got a sinister plan of my own that I'm working on. So okay, all right. Um, you just sit back and relax. It's okay, all, all right, uh, all right. I've just been, uh, your whole question tonight about uh, how long we've been doing this together now. Uh, yeah. I am going to go back and look because I was uh, listening to your uh, your chat about the $30 Patreon level and I'm going, I know, oh, I know. God. If I could build up a list of miniatures. Oh, I know you I could. Pay. I know. So Every month you get shocked. something new. And of course, I'd paint it on, on here. Well, yeah, and that would be the point. I, and if I shopped around, I'd shop around and I'd get maybe three to six models yeah. um, that I thought would be very challenging. Yeah. And I'd give you specific uh, goals and mileposts that I wanted to see on these models. How yeah. would that be? Yeah. Now, this model that I'm showing right now, that's the actual uh, hobby craft paint model that we did. Mirage, yeah, uh, I know. I was looking at that on the side. I still really like that one. But we were still fighting the paint behind that man. It was oh, so, yeah, sure, so sure. Rough. But it turned out uh, really, really nice, though. Course, you know what I like about about that one? The is, the, is it's really bright with color. Yeah. That's and, what I like. And that's the thing with uh, the craft paint. I mean, mm-hmm. craft paint is made to be bright. It's made to be opaque. So, But, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, all the other stuff that I've done there in the past has mostly been Army Painter, you know, with whatever I've done. Mm-hmm. You know, like this guy right here. I mean, that's all Army Painter. I, this is like one of my favorite models, by the way. Um, Which one is that now? This is one I've got in my hand right now. It's like a... Well, I can't see it It's yet. a construct. It looks like it's, it's a construct that's... Uh, oh, this guy again. Yeah. yeah. he Like, if you look at anything, that's a sewing needle right there in his hand. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a spool of thread, and he's all stitched together. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just one of my favorite ones. I mean, Creepy uh, stuff. Uh, of course, then we have this lady here. Of course, I can't really show her too much on here. She's mostly Army Painter paints. Um, you know, I did her with the Army Painter paints and stuff. So, But, yeah, I mean, I, I know I, I'm, I'm partial to Army Painter. It's only because I've, you know, I've gotten so used to using them. But, um... Oh, she's know. a cool sculpt. Yeah. It's just these Reapers are just getting a little bit on my nerves tonight. So, <laughs> I, I, so anyway, I am working on a new set of bases, by the way, for, uh, I'll show you this real quick. Okay, so like, if you look at this model here, this is a Necron for Warhammer 40,000. This is my Necron, by the way. I'll probably be painting these here shortly. Um, I, literally, these are three colors when I get done with them. It'll be uh, black, silver, and green. Um, this is the Citadel, uh, Citadel base right here uh, that he's on. Uh, this is the one that comes with it. And I was missing one, so I started to design um, my own bases. Here's the base I designed here. Um, I did have to put some pus- putty there around his foot and stuff. But here's the cool part about this base is this hole right here 
that's going to fit the magnets that I glue into the base. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm going to post all these on Thingiverse when I get them tweaked out. I need to make these about a millimeter thicker, and we should be good to go. It's good to rock and roll with these guys, so we should be good to go. Actually, I kind of like that thickness. I like the slightly slimmer base. Yeah, yeah. As long as it takes my magnet, I'm okay with it. So. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna start doing that and putting uh, putting these up on Thingiverse and stuff so people can download them and things like that. So. Anyway, I think I'm gonna cut it for tonight. Um, I think okay. I'm glad y'all had a good night. Um, if other people had entered the raffle. We, we would have had the raffle tonight. So I guess we're just going to push it off. I'm going to end up taking all these paints, though, and sticking them in one paint box um, to make a better travel set for these uh, Reapers here. Um, I, I don't really know if I really want to use them all that much. I mean, I'm going to use them. I don't know. I'll use them with the kids and stuff like that. Um I might give them to my son but if he takes an interest more into painting. Um, he hasn't been too too interested in it um, so far. So, But um, he, he does, sometimes whenever he's not playing video games or grounded from Fortnite, he does take an interest in things that are not video game related. So he likes to spend some time doing that stuff. But the, uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, I know. He, he gets so frustrated, though. Like, he's mad at me right now because I, you know, pretty much punished him like our our issue is we don't care that you play video games just don't scream and yell at people online while you're playing video games seriously yeah and that's ended up show some know, control brother you're getting that age you gotta start showing some control yeah and that's pretty much what it was today it was him screaming and yelling at people he's playing playing with so i was like no this is gonna stop we gotta stop now so but let's see here. Uh, I have enough room for almost all my paints. Um, Look at that. Well, I've it's got a handy little case for yeah, sure. Yeah, I do like their cases. So most of them go in here. I do have a couple extra Reaper paints that won't fit in here, but and I will tell you. Um, here I'll show you these real quick. Um, these were the first uh non-commissioned paints I bought from Reaper. Uh, right here, and these are, uh, these are called liner paints, okay, uh, before we go, uh, I got three minutes, so these liner paints, mm -hmm. these are, I got a brown liner, uh, gray liner, and a blue liner, now, they do make three other liner colors, um, and if you know anything about model paints, these actually kind of behave like, uh, Citadel's contrast paints, okay. um, so, think about, actually, I need to mix them, because I haven't mixed them in a while. They're kind of messy, but uh, the thing about them is that they um, they are designed for pretty much what I call pin washing. Uh, they they go into a crevice as you need them to, but if you brush okay. them onto an area, they just they fill in that area. So I'll show you what I mean. So this right now is the brown liner. I've stirred it up some. Come on, and it's clogged. Hold on. So, let me shake it one time. There we go. Okay. So, this is the actual paint here. So, if I take a regular paintbrush, okay, and come back in here with this, I do have a lot more control if I work my brush, put it to the tip. It's designed... Two minutes, dude. Yeah, I know. It's just designed to come into the model like this and just do a line like this. Okay. So you see this line I just created. It's it's why it's called a liner paint, and and they have these paints instead of washes. Okay, this is what I point out to people is that this. Is okay, a, now I exactly know what you mean by okay. a liner. Okay. okay, so they have these paints instead of washes. But if you take a wash brush, right, make sure it's a little wet. Get a little bit of this paint in here, right, and then you come in here like this, and you start. Putting it on top of this area here, you can't really tell it too much, but it actually starts filling in the area like uh, the Citadel's paints do. The the their uh, contrast paints. It goes into the crevices and fills up the top. So it's almost like a wash that you kind of have to thin down a little bit of. Okay. So. Yeah, it has to be really purposeful yeah. painting it on. So you see what I just did right there. You can see mm -hmm. the, the back of the Minotaur. 
soon. It's just how it went. But like if we look over here, yeah, we were able to do a very thin line of the paint by hand, or I could just brush it on like that. So, um, and it here, looks like it's kind of a thickish wash. Yeah. So here's the thing: when contrast paints first came out, I was looking at that and I was like, I've seen that somewhere before. I have seen that somewhere. How those paints are behaving. So, and I bought some contrast paints, and I played around with them. Not a lot of contrast paints, just a couple I needed for a commission. And then it struck me. It's like, I know where I saw this. And I saw all these people make these contrast paints, try to make them by hand. Because, like, the, the bottle for contrast paints is almost twice as much as it is for regular Citadel paint. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could get a set of those beginner sets, I would teach you all how to paint with those as a beginner. But the... Um, I was Another like, day. yeah, well, I saw all these people use them, and like, oh, wow, okay, and I saw people make them, but I was like, I've seen these before, and where I saw them was the liners. Reaper has already had them out God. for years compared to uh, Citadel, so, yeah, just one of those things. So. Cool facts. Anyway, all right, I love you guys. I will see you all next, not next week, because I believe Chuck said we have something else going on next week, so I can take a week off. You all have a great and wonderful night, and it's been swelled, but the swelling is gone down.